That's why right. we're back and forth all night. We're back and forth all night. Man, what's up, family? Welcome, 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 welcome back to another episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. I am your gracious host. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite Nasheed, and we're broadcasting live out here in Los Angeles. Shout out to everybody in the Ustream chat room and all that good stuff right here at TariqRadio.com. That's where you can hear the show on a regular basis, TariqRadio.com. For those who do not know, let me say it again, TariqRadio.com. And also, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes. I always forget to tell people that. Subscribe to this show on iTunes. Type in Tariq Radio, and you can have it downloaded automatically to your iPhone, iPad, and if you're a broke motherfucker, your iPod. All right, but what we're going to do, family, we're going to take a real quick commercial break, and I mean real quick. And when we come back, we're going to chop up some very good game right here on Tariq Elite Radio. Hey, what's up? It's dating and life coach Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my Bad Boy Membership Program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step-by-step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract, date, and have sex with beautiful women. Join the Bad Boy Membership today by going to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com. Are you officially ready to start your business? Are you a startup company seeking funding or a small business loan to get your business off the ground? Then let the team at Central Treasury handle the process for you. They will take care of officially filing your corporate documents with the state and getting your company funded through the government and investors. Visit centraltreasury.com slash business for more information. If you have business plans, corporate filings, the whole nine yards, they take care of that. The team is also available by telephone at 305-965-1255. That's centraltreasury.com slash business. You're now tuning into the king of game, Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. You better recognize. Man, what's up, family? Welcome back. I told you we're going to have a real quick commercial break. Welcome back to the... Tariq Elite Radio Show. I am your gracious host, Tariq Elite Nasheed, and I am back, ready to chop up some very good game with the family. Don't forget to check out Hidden Colors Film. We now have it available for download. You can download one, two, and three and stream it online right now at hiddencolorsfilm.com, and you can still get the DVD. All right, you can get the DVD as well. And we're still working on Hidden Colors 4. A lot of people are asking about Hidden Colors 4. That's going to be available early six, uh, 2016. A lot of people are trying to make pre-orders for Hidden Colors 4. We're not taking pre-orders yet. None of that stuff. People are offering so much money for the pre-orders and pre-wholesale and the whole nine. And I'm not taking none of that right now because I don't want to get nobody's money. And they're like calling me every week man when it's coming is it out yet when's it coming is it out no 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 because it's already a tedious process editing the film we're right in the middle of editing right now and that's a a process within itself so i just want to focus on that and we'll let you know when everything is ready for wholesale and all that good stuff you will definitely know we're gonna make a big 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 shout about it and speaking of um game don't forget to check out my lectures, um, the Code of Conduct Lecture and the International Racism Lecture. You can get that at TariqRadio.com and get that gear, the clothes and the shirts at TariqElite.com. Now, let's chop up some game. Now, a lot of people were asking me what was going on with my social network sites. Well, Facebook in particular. My Facebook page was taken down. Now, my Facebook page is back up. I had to send some information and all that. But what happened? I, I, my Facebook page just, it just, they took it down. And this was my main Facebook page. And then what I did, I created a secondary page and I got like a couple of thousand followers within a day because people started to look for my page wondering where it was. So they searched for me and my new page and people started to add themselves onto the new page. And then last night, they took that shit down. So earlier today they put the new page back up and then later on today they put the old page up so now I got both my my, my, my Facebook pages up and I understand this happens a lot to Melanoid brothers and sisters 
because a lot of times, you know, I talk about some deep stuff on my page. I try to talk about deep stuff. You know, we have the, the silliness and the goofiness every now and then, but I try my best to talk about deep stuff. And really, we talk about a lot of counter racist stuff on my page, stuff how to how to counter racism and how to empower yourself. And from what I keep hearing from different people, Facebook is known for censoring people who are talking about black empowerment. They kind of have this thing where they'll take your page down if you get a little bit too deep. And I'm not the only, I've heard this from several people. And now they're watching my page. So, you know, I got to, you know, I got to walk on eggshells on Facebook now and watch what I say. And on the flip side of that, they have all types of white supremacist organizations all over Facebook who are allowed to say and do whatever. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit later on tonight. We're going to talk about one particular white supremacist who literally got on Facebook, made a video threatening to kill black people. And he's a, a, a law enforcement official down in Texas. And his page is still up. And a lot of the mainstream media, they have not talked about this guy. And I'm going to go into that a little bit later on in the show. But it's just very interesting that the white supremacists can get on Twitter and and Facebook. Facebook in particular. Facebook is very good with the censoring of black folks. But y'all remember, man, I think it was last year where these white supremacist pages all over the um, Facebook, they had like a dead photo of Trayvon Martin. They kept... They were circulating his picture around making profile pictures of a dead black child on these white supremacist pages. And many of them were allowed to do that for a long time. So they get away with a lot of little slick shit on these um, Facebook message boards and pages. You got these white supremacists with guns and weapons, threatening folks. This is why we have to get our own social network site and I'm going to start working on that ASAP and I'm talking about a comparative social networking site that can compete with Facebook and Twitter and all that I'm going to get to work on that I'm definitely going to get to work on that because I'm not in the the business of being censored and all that stuff I want some of my brothers out here who are programmers just to to kind of advise me on some things email me I'm talking about my 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 computer folks out there even some of my white listeners I got millions of white listeners y'all hit me up too I I can use some information from you I'm not trying to because I I take information anywhere I can get it so anybody who has tech information on how to um, um, make a comparative social networking site I'm not talking about just a page hosted on some commercial site I'm talking about our own hosted social networking site that's built from the ground up. I want to get some advisory comments on that and I want to talk to my tech brothers and my tech people who understand how to build sites and host sites and all that stuff. I'm not talking about the Funky Finger Production Renum Spoons type niggas. I'm talking about people who know what they're doing. My email is Info at TarikaLeet.com. Somebody in the chat room said that will be very hard to do. It wasn't hard for the people who did Facebook. It wasn't hard for the people who did Twitter. It just takes paper. And I'm willing to put some paper up. I'm willing to get some paper organized. That's the thing. People talk about what's hard to do and what's, what's difficult. Hell, doing a movie about black history, that was hard to do. But hell, I did it and made it the best selling black history film series ever. So sometimes we just need to do the hard work. Sometimes we just need to put that paper up and make it happen. And I'm willing to do that because we need it. We really need it because we've all, we anyway, we just need our way to communicate with one another without worried about being censored because shit is going down heavy with these white supremacists out here. And we need to have a way to communicate with one another and not be censored and not be shut down and not have coons infiltrate and, and low-key agents infiltrate our spaces. If we control our spaces a little better, we'll be good to go. So email me, man, at info at and we'll chop up game about it because when it comes to talking about some deep stuff, 
you know this brothers start getting censored. Brothers and sisters, if you're talking heavy, we start getting censored. But if we want to be ratchet, oh, Facebook, they'll let that shit go on until you get a, a, a billion views. If we fighting, if we're fighting, fucking twerking, doing dumb nigga shit, that gets 10 million views. They'll let that get shared all over Facebook. But let us start talking about empowering ourselves. And all of a sudden, we got to type in all types of verification codes to get back online. So we it's time for us to get our own shit. I, I've heard from several people that they get censored. So we, we're going to have to rectify that. So that's in the works right now. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of racism, a lot of stuff I want to talk about before I get into that white supremacist. I, I want to play that video of the white supremacist threatening black folks. I'm going to play that a little later. Now what I want to play now, Hulk Hogan. Now, for those who don't know, wrestler Hulk Hogan, he was um, caught. And I'm using the word caught lightly. He was exposed using some racial epithets around, about black people saying some crazy things about black inferiority. It just, it was just making some very derogatory comments about black people. He used the N word. And what happens is a lot of times when these people, the, these white supremacists, when they get outed and they get caught, they make it all about the N word. It ain't about the word nigga. It's about the context. And you were talking about black people in a very inferior manner. That's the that's the problem. Not just the word nigga. The the word nigga was just the vehicle that a lot of y'all use to express your white supremacist views over black people. Just like Paula Dean, they made that whole thing about the N word. And that's why Paula Dean they brought her back. She's about to be on Dancing with the Stars. So the white supremacists are putting her back on a pedestal. And that's what they do. That's why I I I, I wasn't fucking with Steve Harvey. And I love Steve Harvey. I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Steve Harvey, but I, I couldn't co-sign him letting his himself be used as a vehicle to bring her back. Uh, we we got to stop being the vehicles for the white supremacists to come back and get a pass for shitting on us. We just can't get down like that because I knew that's what they were doing by putting her on Steve Harvey's show, put a reputable black man around her so she can get that co-sign, and now. She can come back into the limelight and, and share her white supremacist um, um, nonsense. But it, this is an interview with Hulk Hogan the other day looking for forgiveness for his white supremacy. Hogan, a.k.a. Terry Bollea, asked the audience for forgiveness for racist comments he made in a video that was leaked earlier this summer. Are you a racist? No, I'm not. I'm not a racist. I never should have said what I said. It was wrong. I'm embarrassed by it. But a lot of people need to realize that you inherit things from your environment. And where I grew up was South Tampa, and it was a really rough neighborhood, very low income. And all my friends, we greeted each other saying that word. The word was just thrown around like it was nothing. Is it fair to say that you inherited a racial bias? I would say that is very fair. The atmosphere, the environment I grew up in, all my white friends, all my black friends, to hear the word on a daily basis when they'd greet me in the morning. That's what they say to me. Good morning, so-and-so. I think that was part of the culture and the environment I grew up in. For fans who feel let down by you, mm -hmm. do you ask their forgiveness? Oh my gosh, please forgive me. And see, that's that whole thing. You know, the white supremacists, they love blaming other black folks for them saying nigga. Well, my, my, I was in, I was broke just like black people. And, uh, my black friend said it. And, you know, I said it because of the environment. I said it because I was around them. But your black friends weren't talking about how inferior they were and how superior you were. They weren't talking that. It ain't just about the word. It's about your whole ideology about black people in general outside of the word. Please forgive me. I'm a nice guy. It's not, you know, not the whole Hogan that rips the shirt off and bang, 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 slams giants. You know, I'm Terry Bollea. I'm just a normal man. Okay, well, Hulk Hogan, you want people to forgive you. And, you know, and on behalf of the black community, Hulk Hogan, this is what I want to say to you. Oh, hell no. To the no, no, no. That's for you, Hulk Hogan. To the no, 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 no. Listen. <laughs> That's how we feel about your forgiveness, right there. We, we, that's how we forgive you. That's how we forgive you, Hulk Hogan. Hell to the no, no, no. Come on, come on, come on. Hell no. 
to the long, long, because you ain't sorry. You are not sorry, Hulk Hogan. Hell no. All right, that's enough. Let me put my Mac and music back on. Well, they kill me with their bullshit, man. All right, speaking of bullshit, did y'all see the VMA Awards? The Video Music Awards came on um, VH1, MTV, and BET the other day. The Video Music Awards, uh, it was corny as shit. Let's just, let's be real. I thought it was mad corny. Or maybe I'm just old. Is it me just being an old cat? Because that shit was extremely extraordinary corny. Just not entertaining. The, the one highlight is Macklemore. Macklemore opened the show. He gave a performance. And I like Macklemore. Some people shit on Macklemore, but he's a white rapper. But Macklemore is a good performer. I like Macklemore. I like his songs. And a lot of people will complain that, you know, different groups are co-opting the movements and all that stuff. But the thing is, we let them. And the thing is, a lot of them, they will fuck with the art form in, in the purest form. They, they they bring the heat. We are the ones who are trying to cross over and all that, but they will stay true to the art form. Macklemore was performing, and in the middle of his performance, he brought out Grandmaster Kaz, Melly Mel, and Kumo D to hit a verse. So that was fly. And a lot of black artists, they don't do that. See, though, those those white artists, they know how to, they always go to the source. They know how to go to the source of the hotness and pay homage and get that blessing and get that ism and then they take that and run with it. That's why, man, the best R&B album and I've been bragging about it is a group called Tuxedo, a white, a white group. They had the, the best R&B album that I've heard in 10 years. The Tuxedo album is the best R&B album that's out in, in the last 10 years probably longer than that I mean this it's just pure funk pure funk through the whole album my man Ola put me on to these dudes one of the hottest albums in the game these white cats they study the art form they always done that just like those old rock and rollers from back, from back in the 50s and 60s like the Rolling Stones they would go study Muddy Waters and all those black entertainers that's why the Rolling Stones call themselves the Rolling Stones based on a song from Muddy Waters they go soak up that game and then take it to the next level. See, we, we got to go back and soak that game up. We don't know how to go back to the elders or to the source of things and really soak the game up because we got this thing where we hate on niggas. Oh, that nigga's outdated. He out of style or whatever. Fuck him. We don't know how to go get no game from somebody and find out what they did right and then take it to the next level. We got to get in the habit of doing that. That's what the people in the dominant society does. People in Asian society, they do that. You know, that's why I always pay homage to the old school players. That's why I named my first book, The Art of Mac, and it was really paying homage to all those old school players that lace me with the game. But I was looking at the, the, the award show, and the award show was just real corny. Outside of the Macklemore performance, that shit was corny. Miley Cyrus was just telling a bunch of corny jokes, doing a bunch of corny skits. And then it was this fake staged beef with her and Nicki Minaj, and it was so horrible and corny. If any of you think that shit was real, when Nicki was on stage like, yeah, this bitch is saying stuff about me in the press, what's good, bitch? And like, oh, shit, this is... This is some WWE fake shit. It's so corny. That, that shows how corny the award shows are. You can't just depend on the music no more. You just can't depend on the, the performances anymore. It has to be all this stage fake contrived shit in order to get people to talk about it. Back in the day, you had Luther. These niggas just got on the stage and sang. They didn't have a big band. They just had a mic, a tuxedo, some curl activator, and they sang, and the shit was hot, and everybody talked about it. When Michael Jackson got on stage and did that moonwalk, they've been talking about that shit for 30 fucking years. Your performance was what was talked about. You being that hot, hot, hot artist is what was talked about. Now it's all this corny shit. What you, your titty was out on the red carpet, the nigga's butt cheeks were shaking in the green room, all this all other shit. Get back to the hotness, man. And then Kanye did a speech. Did y'all see Kanye's long... He did a speech for about 20 minutes. Let me talk to Kanye, because I like Kanye. Y'all let Kanye hear this message. I like Kanye West. He's a great producer. I like Kanye. I really do. But the thing with Kanye, 
And looking at that speech he did, he did a long, drawn out, incoherent speech. And, you know, when he, he went out, he got some kind of Vanguard Award, very prestigious award, and they gave him a long round of applause and all that. And the thing is, sometimes you got to know when you're deep and know when you're not deep. And Kanye, I love you, but you're not that deep. I'm saying this out of love. Ain't nobody going to pull Kanye to the side and really break. My man, you're not that deep, and that's not a diss. A lot of people are not deep. The thing is, when a lot of people in the dominant society will egg you on, they love egging black people on who ain't that deep to make you feel like you're deeper than what you are. If you are really deep, they'll be like, okay, let's play the music on his ass and get him off the stage. You dig? But Kanye... My man gets, it's, it's ego when somebody's trying to lace. I don't know if my man can take the game. Because when Sway tried to give him some game, y'all remember when he was on um the morning show with Sway, the wake up show? Sway was trying to give him some game. Like, hey, Kanye, instead of, because Kanye was doing all that old incoherent rant and shit. I'm tr- it ain't Ralph, though. I'm, I'm trying to be this. And, I, and, and Sway was, Sway's from the town. So Sway is like, hey, man, look. Um, why don't you? You're big enough now, man. Why don't you get your own thing, put your own money up, man, and just kind of own your shit? Which was the the greatest advice you can give somebody. That nigga Kanye went off. You ain't got the answer, Sway. He like Sway like hold on, nigga. So Kanye, because your music is hot, a lot of times, man, people make the mistake of this. A lot of times, when you make hot music, people start projecting this deepness on you that's not really there you're a good producer but as far as some philosopher you're just not that deep and the people in the dominant society they'll egg you on they they good for doing that especially when somebody's doing something non-constructive and just babbling they'll egg you on and they'll make it seem like you're saying some deep shit and then low-key be clowning you so kanye please stop these long incoherent rants bruh it's all over the place. I mean, Kanye's speeches, it's like, you know, I, I woke up today and I remembered myself as a unicorn in another life. And I'm like, what the what the fuck is this nigga talking about? He, he's all over the place. So, dude, your music is hot, but humble that shit up so they're not low-key clowning you, dude. Humble that shit up. When you get an award, man... Just humble that shit. Stop trying to be extra deep. Give a shout out to your wife and your kids and Jay-Z and Dame. Give a shout out to niggas and keep that shit pushing. You don't have to do these long, drawn out, incoherent rants. Make it short to the point. I love Kanye. This is just tough love, man. My God. Anyway, let me get a call real quick. I want to take one or two calls because a lot of stuff I got. I still got to talk about a lot tonight. What's up? Who's calling? This is Yay Yay. Who is this? This is Yay Yay. Yay Lay? No, Yay Yay. Y E Y E. How are you? I'm calling from Houston, Texas. Hey, what's going on, Yay Yay? How are you, love? I'm great, thank you. So, what's on your mind? Well, I um, saw when you guys were on the radio um, speaking on this um, entitled. Um, Grand Dragon from Texas. Yeah. Who uh, feels as though he can just say and do and threaten. And I mean, he really has it that way, I guess, in his mind. No. So I thought I would call in and just check out to see what you guys were talking about. Yes, now, let me ask you this Are they talking about him on the news down there? Because they're not doing it on the national news, for what I, from what I understand. Oh, no, no, no. That, that, they're not giving him any. Um, they're not. They're not. They're trying to make him go away. Yeah, I yeah. think he said that he took his post off. You know, and of course we've been reposting it. But yes, yes. I think he realized that um, he needed to go ahead on and take that off. I tried to um, uh, send him a message, but he has it to where on his Facebook, the message part, you have to pay to send him a message. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, it's, it's a dollar. It's a dollar to send him a message. Hilarious. Right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, they, they're, they're trying to make Facebook him go away. You try to send him, 
message you'll see. It's quite okay. interesting. Okay. Well, thank you for the call, sister. Let me let me get some of this other stuff. I'm gonna talk about him a little later. I gotta talk about him later because there's a media blackout for that dude. They're not putting him on on. on they're not talking about him. They're trying to make make him disappear and act like. He doesn't exist, but I get on him in a minute. Yeah, speaking of media, the media here, and also the media in Europe too, because you know I've done media there, and they're they're a little more liberal, so to speak, than the media here. But they still have white supremacist style reporting over there in Europe as well. The same is over here where they tie black people and they find a way to tie black people into something negative. It's, it's a stretch. Like with this, this white supremacist guy that we're talking about, this guy's made a video that's viral right now. His video is viral and mainstream media outlets are ignoring the shit out of it. But black folks, if a black person in, in Houston does something, Black people in Miami are blamed for it. Black people all over the country are blamed for it. it. Just like Chicago, every time we bring up injustice, everybody start telling us about what about Chicago? Like we're responsible for what happens in Chicago. And that's just a deflection. But there was a story that came out today about a random attack where somebody got doused with acid outside in a strip mall, outside in the parking lot of a strip mall somebody got somebody ran up and threw some acid on somebody just some kind of random bullshit attack now and that's pretty much it and these were white people by the way two white suspects ran up and doused somebody in a strip mall parking lot with acid and ran off and they're trying to figure out what was the motive and who the suspects were the headlines read this this is the headlines Man doused with acid after screening of NWA movie straight out of Compton. Google that if you think I'm bullshit. What the fuck does the movie straight out of Compton have to do with what happened in a parking lot of a it's a strip mall? Also, it's a movie theater with multiple movies, so the person could have came from the the Avengers movie the person could have came from the Fantastic Four movie he could have came from any movie the movie literally has zero to do with what happened out there in the parking lot but they found a way to tie black folks in because the movie is doing so well they have to find little ways to shit on it they will find ways to shit on you and tie you into some bullshit if you black. That's why it's so important for us to have our own media and our own social media. And that's what we're going to be working on now, family. And this is what they're doing with Black Lives Matter now. Now, y'all know me. I've been I'm not a part of Black Lives Matter. I've been very critical of Black Lives Matter. Because Black Lives Matter is an organization that's funded and controlled by the white supremacists. And I don't believe Black Lives Matter. Black lives don't matter in a system of white supremacy. So when the white supremacists keep saying all lives matter, I agree. All lives matter except black people. And that's the problem. I want to find out what you're going to do with people whose lives don't matter. But the thing is, there was a shooting out there in Texas, right outside of Houston, from what I understand. they It was a shooting of a cop. It was a cop at a gas station. The cop got shot. A, a random person came up behind the cop and shot him. And there was a manhunt and, they, manhunt and they found the suspect. The suspect is a man named Shannon Miles, who's a mentally ill man. The man spent time in a mental institution he clearly acted alone. He's a lone wolf with mental problems. So they, they're talking about a motive and all that. And it's no motive. It's just basically a mental case. Who shot somebody? 
just like Dylan Roof. Well, not D Dylan Roof. He I, he's not a mental case. He knew what the fuck he was doing. He wrote a manifesto. But a lot of these other mass shooters who who's white, they immediately talk about their mental state and their psychological state and how much of a lone wolf they were. They go out of their way to mention that they were a lone wolf, even though they got ties to certain websites and white supremacist groups. They still push the long lone wolf narrative. Now with this Shannon Miles guy. They've tied this nigga into every single black organization you can imagine. They're blaming everybody. The the police chief sheriff got on TV, did a press conference talking about, well, Black Lives Matter. And then you got the Fox News people talking about Obama's to blame and Sharpton's to blame and Eric Holder's to blame and salt and pepper is to blame every black person is to blame because of this lone wolf random shooting and my thing is the white supremacists are not dumb they're doing that on purpose they they wanted to use that to justify their own racism anyway so now that gives them justification for practicing systematic white supremacy against you because it's hard to practice it on innocent black people you got to keep making up bullshit reasons well he was going for my gun he was a thug and he smoked weed so he was on dope but now if you can make black people complicit in this grand scheme to harm people in the dominant society now you feel justified doing what you were doing anyway and understand family whenever people use the word black lives matter in the dominant society when they keep talking about well what about black lives matter did this and they want you to answer for black lives matter black lives matter is a code word the white supremacists are using black lives matter as a code word it's just a code word for black people black lives matter is a code word for black people that's all it is and they're using code words and the white supremacists are using lies I was looking at Dr. Drew and there was one guy on there and I've seen this a couple of times on TV. They're going on TV talking about, well, Minister Farrakhan said black people should go out and kill white people. Minister Farrakhan didn't say that at all. But the fact that these white control media outlets are letting people get on TV and blatantly lie, that just shows you how dangerous the environment and the terrain is becoming. And what they're doing, Barack Obama has only a, a limited a limited amount of time in office so they're going to close this shit out with a bang they're going to the white supremacists are going to be as violent as they can be so black folks got to get very serious about protecting themselves protecting their families getting cameras everywhere getting cameras in your cars getting coded up as far as the how you operate and what you do getting your money game together building an infrastructure it's 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 very important now because you can't pray these white supremacists away. They, they're desperate right now. And they're going for broke. This is this is their last hurrah to really get it in like they want to get it in. While Barack Obama's in office for these last few months. Or the last year, however long he's going to be in here. And speaking of Obama, he spoke out against these... The, the killing of the police and all that stuff. And him and Loretta Lynch, the... Um, what is she? The... Um, Department of Justice sister tokens just token nigga shit just tokens they come out they speak Loretta Lynch came out today talking about well the killings of all these people have to stop but y'all y'all not speaking up for black folks the international community sees black people getting slaughtered out here ridiculously slaughtered by cops cops are shooting black folks in the back shooting them for, for traffic tickets, lying on black people, and Obama, the Justice Department, they've done nothing. They've done nothing. They've been a big disappointment. Uh, people in Europe, everybody's saying, well, Obama hasn't done anything for black people. He hasn't. They're not going to. But they will come out and speak out against everybody else talking about All Lives Matter. They're just token people in token positions. We just got to accept that if you haven't accepted it now. But what I want to do, let me play this rant by this guy. His name is Nathan Inner. And like I said, the mainstream, they're not touching this dude. They're not touching this interview. They're just acting like this doesn't exist. And this is the video of this guy because he's upset about the cop getting killed because it, now the Negroes are out of line because when they... When they punish us, they want us to be docile and weak and subservient and, and take our punishment, 
submissively. They want us to submit to the punishment. So now they're getting riled up, and this guy's chicken shit because there's another another video of this guy who's um, I'm about to play. He's getting punked out by Cornell West of the Black Panthers. This happened about a year ago. But this is the video of this guy. He made a couple of days ago. He took it down off his Facebook page. The, the video has gone viral, and this is him threatening black people. I'm going to give my commentary throughout the video. Hi, this is Nathan Nenner from Hemphill, Texas. If you don't like cussing, go ahead and cut this video off now. Or get your kids out of the room because I'm very pissed off. I give you time to do that for just a minute. Okay, I want to talk to you about what happened in Harris County where this black thug went up and just executed a, a, a deputy. Now, he, he, this guy, now if you listen to it, he keeps going off code. You know, you're supposed to just use the code words, you know, like thug and. You know, Black Lives Matter and the Black Panthers. These are all code words for all black people. But he he cannot contain himself, contain himself. These black thugs and the black bastards. I mean, listen to him. Because he was a white deputy, because he was a law enforcement officer. It's going to end and it's going to end with that. That's not going to happen anymore. That's the end of it. Y'all have pushed us to the limit and we ain't going to take it no more. They stuff that us citizens can do and we're fixing to do them. Start. Now listen to what he said. It's stuff that us citizens can do. Listen to the language here, because see, l l let's just be real. Many of the white supremacists, they don't look as black people as citizens. That's just the reality. They don't look at black people as citizens. They don't. This is why they treat us the way they do and justify it, because we have to ask the question, are we technically citizens and is the Constitution going to apply to us? But they are, I've heard white supremacists like this before talk about well a citizen was harmed by a black guy a, 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 a citizen citizen is the cold word for white all right citizen is cold word for white all right now that black guy he pulled the trigger on that cop but he really ain't the one that actually killed the cop the one that killed him was these black panthers and all these black thugs that comes to your town and marches and hollers oink oink bang bang and all that retarded shit you know they're the ones that's responsible for it them and people like like oh, um, uh, um, Farrakhan wanting, wanting 10,000 volunteers to track people down cops and all that and kill them starting now we holding these people responsible like I said it stops now don't ever let a Black Panther or any black group come to your town and march in that town and get done and be able to get in their vehicle and leave. All right, now listen to what he says. He keeps going off code. He's so racist, he can't even stick to the code. You're supposed to just name particular groups, but he's like, don't let the Black Panthers, any black groups, don't let no black groups, so any group of black folks, you're in danger, all right? to get in their vehicle and leave that's over with and law enforcement i'm talking to you now when we get there and we're going to be there step aside now he's mentioning law enforcement now this guy he's a former correctionals officer at a prison he was a correctional officer at, at a prison i think he's like a bounty hunter and so he's a law enforcement guy he's hooked in with law enforcement and law enforcement, they protect this guy. And on his Facebook page, he's all hooked in with those city officials and all that. So he's one of those good old boy. So that's why he's comfortable saying all this stuff on Facebook and saying it openly. And, and also, this guy has ties to the Klan. So his racism is known. He's kind of a known white supremacist out there in Texas. That's why the Panthers had a, a problem with him um, a year or so ago. So this is him. Do not try to stop us, because our fight is not with you, it's for you. Now, I'm going to tell you old people, grandmas, grandpas, kids, all of you can get in on this. When there's a Black Panther group going to head to a town, and they're going to rally and holler, kill cops, kill cops, law enforcement, you put it out, and you let people know they're coming. And all you older people that wants to get involved, i got something for you. This is called a slang shot. You go to Walmart and you get it. Okay, when these Black Panthers come to your town to start with, they have to drive a vehicle. Well, that's where you start at. 
you disable them vehicles. You pepper their ass with, with rocks. You bust the windshields out. You stop them vehicles from running. Okay, now uh, listen to this dude. This is a lawman, uh, a former corrections officer, who's hooked in with all the law enforcement and politicians out there in, in the Houston, Hempfield area. And he's telling white people to hit black folks with rocks and use slingshots on black people. All right? When them Panthers has to walk and run out of town, they will not come back to your town. You people do that. Me, I will be there. If I have to be there by myself, I will, but I don't think I have to. All you guys like me that's able to stand up and fight, we're going to be there long as the law enforcement lets us know they're coming. And we're going to push them Panthers out of town. Never now, he's telling old white people, <laughs> he's telling old white people, if they see black folks or groups of black folks come to their town, he's holding up a slingshot, get a slingshot, and pelt them with slingshots. Now, dude, this is not 1965. Because, not, not, no, 1965, they got it in. But this ain't 1935. Well, we just took ass whoopings like that. You understand? We ain't gonna just take an ass whooping like that, man. You, you're telling old white people to do that, and well, old white supremacists, because only a white supremacist would do that. But don't get them old white supremacists caught up fucking with these new black folks, because you go out here talking about Nana hitting somebody with a slingshot. Somebody's gonna knock the veins out of Nana's skin. Hitting somebody with a damn slingshot in this environment. Never again will they stand in a street in Texas or anywhere else and holler, kill cops, kill cops. Them son of a bitches, their days are over with. And I'm not just talking today, I'm telling you, I'm going to be there. And all you other people want to get involved, get that damn slingshot. Nobody's ever went to jail for a slingshot. Y'all get that slingshot, get you some damn rocks, and when they come out in that street, y'all go, we'll give you a few minutes to pepper their ass. You light them up like they got mumps and measles when they go home with all the bumps and knots all over their asses. They won't come back. And what's left of them, myself and some other people, will take care of that. Because we have had enough. There won't be another killing in Texas. I can promise you that. It might be a killing, but it won't be what you think. There won't be no more cops executed in the state of Texas. And like I said, you law enforcement officers, step the hell aside. Do not get in front of me. Do not try to stop any of us. Because we're doing this shit for you and for ourselves. What happened happened to the law enforcement and it also happened to us. And we're not going to take it anymore. We're done with it. It ends. It ends now. And it ends in the state of Texas, you sons of bitches. You black panthers and you thugs. You uh, black... He... You, nigger is at the tip of this motherfucker's tongue. <laughs> he wants to, he he keeps having wanting to go off code so bad. He keeps black you you you, you black you uh, uh, panthers. He want to say you black niggers. It's on the tip of his tongue. He wants to say it so bad. It ends now, and it ends in the state of Texas. You sons of bitches. You black panthers and you thugs. You uh, Black Lives Matter bullshit, you bunch of freaking retards, you better run and you better hide. Because we're looking at videos, we're pulling names and addresses, and we're going to hunt you sons of bitches down. Because we're pissed off. All right, now they talking about hunting black folks down. They're talking that vigilante Turner Diary shit. That's why I always promote that book, The Turner Diaries. This is what they're talking about. That vigilante white supremacist groups, they, they're going to go hunting black folks down and all that old shit. This, this dude said this on Facebook and his page is still up. This dude is just straight up giving terrorist threats on Facebook and his page is still up. But they be taking my page down for talking about him. And ain't nobody going to stop us now, you dirty bastard. Last freaking thing, some of you saw. Okay, now he has a gun. Now, in the video, now you can watch the video at MelanoidNation.org. It is viral. It's, you can probably find it anywhere, but definitely MelanoidNation.org. Now he has a gun in his hand. He done went and picked up a gun. Some bitches are here. Is that noise right there when we come in your goddamn house? Now, wait, he done picked up a gun and cocked the gun and said, that's what you're going to hear when we come in your goddamn house. 
Now, let me say, I wish that motherfucker would come in my house. We both gonna be cocking some shit then. Stop us now, you dirty bastard. Last freaking thing, some of you son bitches are here. Is that noise right there when we come in your goddamn house? Don't ever threaten another cop in Texas. Don't ever threaten another white person. And you black bastards, you goddamn <laughs> panthers and shit. Oh, no, he tried to clean it up. Uh, he tried to clean it up. You black bastards, uh, you panthers. Then he tried to say the panthers. He got off code. He said it right the first time. You black bastards, uh, you panthers and shit. He tried to clean it up. <laughs> Don't ever threaten another white person. And you black bastards, you goddamn panthers and shit, try to come to another town and try to march. See what happens to you, because I ain't playing. And I'll tell you something else. I got a bunch of mail from Hempstead, Texas, where you want to rename a street Sandra Bland Street. You know, that ain't happening. You people in Hempstead, don't let them put name your street after a freaking thug. We're not... This now this one pissed me off right here, cause a lot of his shit was just comical. Cause you know I, I wish that motherfucker would run in my house, but when he started shitting on Sandra Bland, that really really got under my skin. You fucking douchebag! Don't let them put name your street after a freaking thug. Where this motherfucker called Sandra Bland a thug. This asshole calls our sister, who we feel was killed in that jail, and now th this is the mindset of the people, because this is the same, you know, a little general area. This dude calls Sandra Bland a thug. That's why I say thug is for all of us. Black folks, get off this shit where you sit around the white supremacists, you, you think they talking about somebody else when they calling somebody a thug. They're talking about you. Thug is a code word for nigga. Thug is a cold word for nigga. But this shows how cold these people are. And this is why so many black folks end up dying and getting beat up out there in Texas. This is the mindset of law enforcement there. And don't let them put name your street after a freaking thug. We're not going to stoop that low. Sandra Bland had a, had a rap sheet a mile long. She was full of dope, disrespectful embarrassment to her. <sighs> So she was had a rap sheet a mile long. Sandra Bland had like traffic violations for the most part. What the fuck is he talking about a rap sheet a mile long? Had a gang of misdemeanors. Sandra Bland had a bunch of misdemeanors. Mostly traffic. And doped up. Meaning she what, had marijuana at one point. Which is legal in many states. So what, See how the white supremacists try to be slick with their words? She was full of dope, disrespectful embarrassment to her, to, to Hempstead, Texas, and hung her damn self. Well, let me tell you something. A thug's life don't matter. We don't give a shit about you damn thugs. Thug is nigga, by the way. He's telling you the truth in a system of white supremacy. A nigga's life don't matter. That's a Thug is nigga. Thug is the new nigga. When they say thug, they're just talking about niggas. Because anybody's a thug. If, if Sandra Bland's a thug, that's the she was the farthest thing from a thug. But if she's a thug, everybody's a thug. It's just a cold word for nigga. A black life, a white life, police life, a rebel life, a, 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 a redneck life. All our lives matter. Every life except for a freaking thug. Your life don't matter. And you sons of bitches, you fixing to find out how it don't matter. Because you done pissed us off, you bunch of bastards. Uh, uh, let's see. That's about it. That's all I got to say to hell with it. <laughs> oh, let me put my, my music on. But hey, family. I like races like that. You know what? I like my races just like that. Because, see... Dudes like that, that wakes other black people up. Because, see, the thing is, the white supremacists, they know how to be slick. And a lot of white supremacists are distancing themselves from him. Like, oh, shit, he, he broke the code. Because he was, he was going off code a little bit too much. See, you, you're supposed to display your, your white supremacist views in code. That way, black folks will stay asleep.
Because at the end of the day, we want that hug from white mommy and daddy. And they always get around us, pat us on the head while they practice their racism. See, that's the kind of thing that keeps the system going. When they hugging us and practicing their racism with their arm around us. Using little sweet code words like, well, you know, all lives matter. You know, I'm going to, I can, I can give you some used clothes of mine to show you that I'm not racist. See, I just gave you some shoes and a hat. A racist wouldn't do that, would he? And black folks eat little dumb shit like that up. And that same person will go behind closed doors and be the uh, bleeding white supremacist. I was having a conversation or a debate with somebody on Twitter, a white supremacist female, who was who had all these negative views about the protesters and Mike Brown and Tamir Rice and all these black people getting killed. She had very negative views about them. And then she was like, well, I'm not racist. I taught at an inner city school for 20 years. I said, that's the reason why our children are so fucked up. I gave those children shoes when some of them didn't have shoes. I'm not racist. I give them crumbs off my table. It's that type of shit. The thing is, why are those kids underprivileged? See, I get to the root. I don't want you giving me some fucking crumbs and butter biscuits. Let's get to the root of why I'm walking around with no shoes if I'm broken, disenfranchised. Who disenfranchised me? Why am I being disenfranchised? The system shouldn't exist. I don't want you coming around me with... with food stamps and crumbs give me the correct resources or don't block the resources that I'm trying to get but this is why so many black children are fucked up because they have these white supremacists teaching them who's pretending that they're so called liberal but this guy Nathan Inner he's an old school hardcore white supremacist that's what I like just tell me what you about let's not sugarcoat it let me know the deal so I can stay strapped up when you come around. So I ain't got to come around you and then you sneak me on some bullshit. I know what I'm getting into when I'm fucking with you. Black folks need more of that because the people like that will wake you up. And, and that's what we need. We need to get rid of the bullshit. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. If you're a white supremacist, let us know. Let's figure out what we're going to do about the system of white supremacy and what you're going to do about the black problem since you say we are a problem. And black folks, stop being in denial about racism because that's what these race deniers want you to do. You have a lot of people out here who are called race deniers or white supremacy deniers, racism deniers, rather. Even this guy is a racism denier. He's one of these guys who doesn't believe racism, white supremacy exists. It's just black folks just don't have their shit together. You black bastards is that type of thing. So we have a, a culture of racism deniers, and that's their game to sit up and deny racism over and over again because at the end of the day, they figure, okay, well, shit, you can't do shit about it anyway, so I'm going to sit up and play this game and just keep denying that a system of white supremacy exists. So let's not get conned by the racism deniers. White supremacy is in full effect, in full swing. It dominates every form of people activity right now, not 20 years ago, not 100 years ago, not 400 years ago. Right now, white supremacy is the dominant force in all areas of people activity. And when people try to point to token positions, like, well, look at Oprah. If racism exists, Oprah wouldn't have all that money. That's tokenism. That you're talking to a racism denier. If people start talking about, well, Obama's the president. How can racism exist when Obama's the president? You're talking to a racism denier. Because Obama's in a token position who can't do anything for other black folks. He's totally dominated and controlled by the white supremacists. White supremacy is a group phenomenon where one group controls another group. And that group, the dominant group, can allow a token or two come in to come in. But that doesn't negate the fact that white supremacy is still the structure. So stop letting these white supremacists con you and understand. Many of them think like this, this guy right here. Many of them think like this guy right here. This is why so many black people are getting killed. This guy right here, people like him are on these grand juries. People like here are in these courtrooms when we go in. That's who they get. And those non-racist people in the dominant society, they have not done anything to stop these Nathan Inner people. And that's the problem. So we got to find a way 
for the dominant society and our government to protect us, give us a certain level of sovereignty to protect us from the Nathan Inners of the world. Because we, I ain't trying to convince these people to like me. I want to know how I can be protected from them and and not have them thwart me getting the sort the, the resources I need for me and my family. Because that's their job. These white supremacists, they are in the position of maldistributing resources away from you. And we got to figure out how to protect ourselves from that. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Don't forget, fam, go to my um, my page. My page is back up. Uh, my Facebook page at Tariq Elite. Facebook.com slash Tariq Elite. And also my new Facebook page, like... Add yourself to that page too, just in case one of the pages go down. I have my backup page. My new page is facebook.com slash the real Tariq Nasheed. And also follow me on Twitter at Tariq Nasheed. Everybody should be following me on Instagram at Tariq Elite. Follow me now, just in case any of my social media pages go down. You can have me at the other spot so we can communicate and chop up game until we get our own site, which is what I'm working on now. Don't forget to get the brand new RBG shirts at TariqElite.com. We got them in black. We got them in gray. We got them in gold. Get that right now. Get the Melanoid Nation flag and wave that flag high at MelanoidNation.org, family. And don't forget to subscribe to this show on iTunes and listen every week at Tariq radio.com I'm out of here family I will holler at you guys next week on Ustream peace